Hi everyone, my name is Megan Davenport and I'm serving as the 2021 Hartford County 4-H intern for UConn Extension. We're going to quickly go over how to fill out this online entry form for the Hartford County 4-H fair this year. Due to COVID and for convenience, we made this online and easily accessible on your computer or your mobile device instead of having to fill out paper forms and mailing them in. So really quick, um, this program is Qualtrics and it's very easy to use and very user friendly. So on the left right here is what the display will look like if you fill out the form on a computer like I'm doing right now. And then on the right, it'll also show you what it'll look like on a mobile device. I'm in the editing mode, which is why I can see both. But when you fill it out, you only see whatever one is appropriate for whatever device you're filling the form out on. So this is just for demonstration purposes, just to see the format in both um, purposes or both devices. Okay, first off disclaimer, on time submission deadline. The deadline is August 1st, which is a Sunday, 2021. There are no premiums for late entries and advanced entries are mandatory. So make sure you get them in on time. Um, August 1st is still about a month away. So make sure you get it in on time. Then we're going to go down to the general information for the exhibitor. As a UConn Husky, I thought it'd be appropriate to fill in the information based off of Jonathan the Husky, our mascot. So for you guys, you'll put down the name of the exhibitor, your full name. Don't worry about last name, comma, first, like some programs might require. Just do your full name. Then your mailing address, the city or town you live in, your state, which will be most likely Connecticut, and you can just abbreviate that to CT. Then your zip code and then your phone number, please follow the appropriate format of the X's over here or like I displayed here. Then you'll do a email right here and then your birthday again, fill out based off the appropriate format over here, please, just like this one. Then your club name, if you have multiple, you can make sure to put all of them down, but you can separate them with a comma or just and just make sure you put them all down. And then you'll put down the town or multiple towns that your animals are kept at right here. Okay, then moving on, we're going to pick whatever species or projects you're entering into the Hartford County for chair. So you're going to enter all of your projects that are uh, applicable to each exhibitor through this one program. So you're going to click multiple of these if that applies or just one. Make sure you click all of them that apply if you have multiple. So for instance, we're just going to do dairy. We'll do dogs since husky, trap and the husky is a dog. And then we'll do poultry because that one's a little tough um, and we'll go over that. And then it asks you a question about general knowledge contest. So if you're entering into any of these, click all that apply. If not, just click none of the above. So we'll do none of the above for now. And we'll move on. Okay, so dairy, it'll ask your showmanship class. So you'll click whatever one, whatever one is appropriate. Then your identification number for the dairy animal. It's used for showmanship class. All the other species besides dairy don't ask for an identi identification number. Um, just for dairy, so just make a note of that. And then for your first animal you're entering, put in the animal identification, whether that's an ear tag or a tattoo number, et cetera. You put down the breed and then the birthday, again, reflecting the appropriate format displayed right here and the same format they use for your own birthday when you put it in. And then you'll go down to what classes you'll be entering with that dairy animal. So click all that apply. That's really only if you have, say, winter heifer calf, um, and then you have a damaged daughter because you have multiple cows and one of them is um, this animal's mom or if you're doing bread and own, et cetera. But make sure to only click one of these ones because obviously you can't have the same heifer doing winter heifer class and then a spring yearling class. And then you'll click all that apply there. And then to add another animal, you'll click yes and you'll put in animal number two and then animal number three's information, et cetera. If you only have one, click no. Don't skip this question. Make sure to answer yes or no, simply because if you skip it and don't answer it, it'll keep asking it until you click yes or no. So we'll do yes just for just to see what it looks like. And it'll be the same type of format. So click all that apply. And then we'll do answer is no. And then total number of dairy animals. We did two. We didn't really fill them out, but we had the entries for two. So make sure to fill that out based off of how many entries you fill in. Then moving on to the next species, we have dog. You click the showmanship class you're doing. I'm just putting random ones just for demonstration purposes. Then we have your primary dog information. Put, write down the call name and breed, and then the class that that animal or that dog is going to be put into. So if you want unleashed division, and then add another animal, yes or no. We'll do no because we already went over that. 
and then total number of dogs, just did one. And then also, if this specific dog is going to be used by another 4-H, you have to you have to use a whole new entry form for that 4-H. So you can't submit both 4 hers information on one form. Each 4-H has to have their own form with their own general information, as well as their dog or their species information. So if it's the same dog, you'll just copy that information over, but the other 4 h needs to put down their general information. And then also introduction to showing, yes or no. And then dogs are the only ones that have this, but you have to upload the health forms and verification forms. So you can do that by clicking and it'll bring you to your documents and you'll just add that in. Um, and then same thing with the phone, um, the mobile version will ask for the same thing and it'll pull up probably your photos or notes app or something. And you go to the next question. And then poultry is a little confusing. That's why I picked this one to demonstrate. You'll go through the shamanship class, you'll put in the animal information for the first one. And since poultry embodies so many different species, we kind of broke it up so that you have chickens and turkeys. If animal number one or poultry number one fits this description, if it's a chicken or turkey, you'll click this, pick whatever is appropriate. If it's not one of these, you'll click NA or non applicable. Same thing for game birds, waterfowl, ducks, and geese, and then meat and egg production. So you'll fill out whatever is appropriate for each individual poultry animal. And then if you wanna add more, you can add another animal, yes. And then this time say it's a game bird, you'll just do NA for this. And then you'll click whatever is appropriate here, like a pair of pheasants, and then NA for this and et cetera. You'll go down the list. Just make sure that you are filling out the proper information for the species for each individual poultry you're entering. And then we'll do no to add another animal. Total was two. There's a lot more options here because poultry, there's a lot more members that bring multiple poultry versus multiple other species. And then it'll, it'll also ask for the number of cages you'll need. So please specify that in the following multiple choice questions. And then we'll click next. And then this will bring you right to the end. You're just gonna have yourself, the exhibitor sign below and then have your legal guardian or parent sign as well. It's honestly a lot easier to sign it through a mobile device or an iPad or some smart tablet where you can use your finger to write it. So I would suggest doing that if you just want an easier way to sign it. Otherwise you can use your mouse pad or a physical mouse to draw your name as best you can just to sign here. And then you'll write down the date in the proper format here that you filled out this form just so we can have it for um, just for our purposes of keeping track of when everyone submits these things, especially for the August 1st deadline. And then finally, you'll answer the question on how you like this online digitized 4-H entry form compared to the paper versions in the past. So zero to 10, you'll rank your, I guess, um, preference, whether you like the paper or the online form. So zero is if you really don't like the online form, you prefer the paper. 10 is the opposite, and we're gonna put 10 because it seems like it's gonna be an easier way to enter information for the future. And so then you'll be all set. Oh, yeah, and this will actually, these, um, all of the questions or most of the questions have a little asterisk next to them or are required. So if for some reason you missed one and it was required, it won't let you submit past it. You have to fill out the information. So we're just gonna sign here as best we can. We'll just sign. Obviously, you'll put in a better signature. I'm just doing this for demonstration purposes. And then the date, we'll do today's date, which is this. And then we move on. And then you're all set. Everything will be sent and your response is recorded and you'll be all set. So if you have any questions, you can always refer to your club leaders, your fellow 4 Hers, or any of the extension educator employees. They all should know um, and can direct you from there and answer out of your questions. Besides that, you'll be all set and have a great fair. We'll see you in August.